Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of Marvel Comics, The Untold Story. This is by Sean Howe and it's from Harper Perennial. It's about 480 pages in total and this book came out in 2013. And it's, as you can see, paperback. Wow, what a book, I must admit. Impressive amount of information in this. It is certainly a fine history. Now it doesn't have a huge amount of information about the very early days. If you want that, I would suggest The Secret History of Marvel Comics. That is a superb book by Michael Vassilo. Definitely worth checking out. But this does have a lot about the early days. Martin Goodman, Stan Lee, of course. All about Bill Everett, also Carl Burgos. All the sort of Human Torch, all that sort of thing. Joe Simon, lots of the... Because, of course, it all came from pulp, pulp magazines. Initially, Martin, whoops, Martin Goodman, book flying over, wants to escape from me. And, well, it goes through a lot. And then it gets, of course, through the... 1950s, because there was an infinite amount of problems there with 1950s with all the different magazines. Of course, 1957 was the Atlas implosion where every all the, near enough, all of them disappeared. I mean, there were so many magazines back in the 50s. I've bought lots and lots over the years. Just absolutely, I love them. But they, uh, there's a, they were checking out. However, you've got a lot of information, of course, about Dick Coe, uh, Jack Kirby, etc. All that sort of period, Wally Wood, Lots of mentions of all the various in the 60s, all about letters, pages, etc. There's just tons and tons and tons of background detail about all sort of you know, behind the scenes of how it was all done. And maybe not a vast amount, particularly about Jack Kirby. It's a little bit, but it's uh, you obviously got here about, like, about Silver Surfer, etc. All behind the scenes of what happened there as well. There's just tons of details about everything you want to know about the 60s. But it really is probably more information about the 70s and 80s, I felt. But uh, though, I must say I didn't read so much of the Marvel comics in the 80s and 90s. So a lot of that sort of stuff was was interesting to suddenly find out about some of these things. So it's, uh, but there's like mentions obviously of Roy Thomas, Mike Blue, there's all the Gary Friedrich, you've got uh, Archie Goodwin. That is just, just pages upon pages, all the people. Uh, George Perez, Chris Claremont, all behind the scenes, all about there. Frank Miller, and and lots of other people. Most of them you probably maybe never heard of. Obviously, you've got Jim Shooter, but you just just seeing Jim Shooter's name there. But see Peter David. But there's lots of people just behind the scenes, all the sort of various money men and things that just when you read this, you think it's amazing that you actually got Marvel comics coming out the way that they were sort of doing this and doing that, going to the obviously the distribution, the movies, and it's just tons and tons of information about it. And I have to say, there's this guy here, Arad. Arad, and you've got, let's see, other names that are mentioned. Obviously Don Heck, you've got here, pictures of smiling old Marvel bullpen, etc., etc. And you've got Toy Biz, they're mentioned here. Uh, Calmar Calamari, uh, obviously Queens, there's just, well, it literally is, Pack solid with information. So if you really any interest in the sort of Marvel comics beyond thing, it actually is sometimes slightly depressing in many ways. You you get a feeling that it's all sort of you know all these crazy people are working away and they're producing the best best comic that you could ever imagine. But at the end of the day, of course, money realities do kick in, and there's lots of obviously things that you know change. And you think, oh, why didn't they just allow this person to produce that masterpiece or whatever? And of course, that world doesn't happen. So it's it, but it's absolutely fascinating. Now this goes up to about, I think it's about sort of 2005, 2006, I think the last sort of thing. And it's talking about things obviously like about Kirby again. And well, I love this one about Marvel. I don't even remember Marvel. I must admit, uh, the Thunderbolts, all the various things. So it's just, oh, Pearl, I can't even say his name, Pearl Mutter. So just loads of people I must have didn't know anything about. So it's just fascinating to read about that. So it's worth checking out if you just all the way through Marvel Comics, all behind the scenes, and not a vast amount of books and things that are mentioned here, but there's a, a decent amount of notes at the back. So uh, you know you have to go through it, and you can obviously find a lot of different uh, magazines that refer to Comic Buyer's Guide, as well as Los Angeles, whatever. Uh, comic Book Resources, Comic Journal, Amazing Spider-Man 416. Let's just reference, and then of course a lovely index at the back. However, you can see from there, no pictures at all. So if you're looking for this book to 
see behind the scenes in terms of pictures. Now that would have been quite fascinating as well. This sort of book you think in many ways would have been nicer, because you can see it's a fairly obviously standard paperback, would have been nice to be a more uh, coffee table sort of book with a lot of pages, but also some pictures and things would have been good. Because of course, got no pictures to know what these people look like, but I mentioned, mentioned lots of names. Actually, it would have even been a nicer sort of like a middle page, maybe 10 pages of photos. Obviously, charge a little bit more, but but see, you know, see the people's, you know, that they mentioned all those three. It gives a sort of feel. I have no idea. Of course, you can look online. I guess that's going to be the easiest way. But it was fascinating. So definitely a recommended book. Thoroughly enjoyed reading it. So uh, Marvel Comics, The Untold Story.